Hi everyone, I'm Kat. I'm from Alberta, Canada. For all of you people who haven't met me yet, for all those who know who I am, hey, hi there, it's been a while. I just got some news to tell you. Now, if you look to the little eye thing, which I think is there, or maybe it's there, I'm not sure which angle my uh, webcam is going to put in that little eye thing. You're going to see that there's a testimony that was professionally done when I was down in Redding, California in May, early May of 2022. And I am taping this right now on July the 27th, 2022. So about almost three months ago. I can't believe that. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a little heads up of what's been going on. So here is a Coles Notes version of what's been happening. Now, I was born with a genetic progressive neurological condition that has no cure. And at the moment, from the moment of conception, it begins its slow progress. I'll have to tell you how old I am so you can understand all this, but I turned 65 on April the 30th. Keep that date in mind. It's an important one. It's not because it's my birthday, but it's an important part of the story here. So uh, over the years, that disease uh, affected me to the point that in my late 30s, I had to retire from the mission field. Uh, I, over the years, it's progressed to the point where I've been wearing heavy leg braces on my feet, using a cane or using a walker or using a power chair. My balance was extremely poor to the point that if I was working in my kitchen, I would have to lean against things constantly just to work around in the kitchen. And I was falling pretty often, not super often, uh, but to the point that my doctor had get, took some x-rays on my knees once where and I strained something and he was actually shocked that I hadn't had knee replacements yet uh, because they were in such bad shape. Now on to the rest of the story. Uh, if you notice my eyelids, that's going to be part of this, so pay attention. Pay attention to my speech. Those of you who know me, so here's the story. On April the 17th, 2022, I was part of a prayer and worship group over Zoom on the internet where there was a live worship band. Uh, it was all professionally done, so it wasn't bad. You know how music can be bad on Zoom. No, this was really good. And at one point, the leader of our encounter room, I guess you could call it that, uh, said that he really felt that people needed to stand up in their rooms, at their homes, wherever they were, except if they were behind the wheel of their car, and to stand if they needed a breakthrough in their lives or if they wanted to see a breakthrough in the lives of other people. So I stood, and this is where the rest of my story begins. I stood for 20 seconds you're thinking, well, that's not very long. You could stand anyhow. But I stood without any pain. I stood without wobbling. I stood for my three friends. I was contending for them. It wasn't even for me. But God, <laughs> he began the healing work in my life. If you watch this video up here or here, you can go watch it now. I tell the whole story in a little bit more detail. So if you wanna pause this, go watch it and come back, that's great. But if not, let's go with the crib notes. So at that point, I knew something had happened. I was standing with no pain for a good 15 to 20 minutes that day without needing to hold on to anything besides one fingertip on the edge of my desk. And I noticed a shift was happening in my speech, but I didn't know what it was. April the 30th, I was in Redding, California to graduate from my second year in ministry school. And I took advantage of going to the healing rooms there where people will pray for you for physical healing. It's, they don't got any special powers, but they are agreeing with you that God wants to heal you. And we see miracles going on all the time. I'm actually now part of the healing rooms 
ministry team over the internet. Every second week, we have a healing room over Zoom that you can call into, and I'll put a link below. So, and the dates of the next healing rooms and a little bit of information so you know when you need to register for it. Back to the story, I'm there in person. They begin to pray for me. April the 30th, on my birthday, God said, hey, guess what? There's still more. By the end of a very short prayer time, I was able to walk around that sanctuary of the church using my walker as a glorified purse holder rather than me having to lean against it as I w walked. I was able to lift my leg up and just hold on to my walker as a little bit of balance standing on one foot. My deltoid muscles in my upper arms, I can I could feel them. The muscle wastage in my upper arms had gotten so bad that it was difficult for me to lift my hands up like this for more than 10 seconds without it beginning to burn like uh, you had been lifting 200 pound weights. And that pain had been there whenever I lifted my hands since I was maybe 19 years old. I've been holding my hands up now for oh, it's about 30 seconds, but I can do it for much longer than that. I can stand in church and worship my king for a good 15 minutes before I start to get fit fatigued. God's building up my strength, guys. On, and another thing that's been happening, uh, my eyelids. I had gone to the doctor two weeks before I went down to California because I knew I needed a new prescription. But when he did his exams, he told me that I would probably need to have my eyelid surgery done again. Uh, I had corrective surgery on my eyelids. It wasn't a eyelid lift just because I wanted to look better. It was so I could see. And that, those heavy eyelids were caused by this neurological condition. Well, they, the eye that he was most concerned with popped open when I was in the healing room. Nobody even prayed for me about my eyelids. I just said, I think my eyelid, something's going on. And the person that was there went, I saw that happen. <laughs> she thought, I thought maybe you had a twitch. <laughs> Since that point, I am uh, riding my exercise bike for about uh, 45 minutes to one hour every single day. Uh, yeah, six days every week. Let's get real, Kath. And uh, I have noticed my feet are beginning to sweat. Now, dead nerves don't sweat, guys. So my feet were not sweating even when I was exercising extremely hard. They're starting to sweat now. Oh, well, I'll have to change my socks more often now. <laughs> Other things that happened. I, uh, two weeks, about three weeks before I went down there, I went to my family doctor because my dentist suggested that I do so because my blood pressure, which had always been a little bit high every time I went to the dentist because I've got white coat syndrome, uh, where your blood pressure kind of spikes whenever you're going to anything medical. Well, even for me, the numbers were very high and they had been significantly higher for the last three times I had seen him. So I went to the doctor. She confirmed, we better see what's going on. They did a b b battery of tests. Uh, and then she also ordered a 24-hour blood pressure monitor test. In the meanwhile, about since August of 2021, I bought a hand blood pressure cuff, you know, that you can use at home. And my numbers were not going down significantly. They were going down a little bit, but still not as much as I knew that they should. So that's why I went to the doctor. She ordered a 24-hour blood pressure monitor test. I went to that test, or they strapped the blood pressure cuff to me three weeks after I was down in Reading. During that three-week period, I noticed my blood pressure was looking kind of good, so I thought my blood pressure cuff wasn't working anymore, so I bought a new one. Well, turns out that God healed me because that blood pressure monitor 24-hour test isn't going to lie. 
And uh, it said my blood pressure was absolutely normal, well below any concern any doctor would have. And so I rejoice and I give thanks to that. One other thing that's happened in the last couple, three weeks, uh, I went to a concert. Yay! Uh, we had a great time. But for me to get into that concert, I needed to climb three stairs. Do, do, do. I had not climbed stairs in a long, long time. And so I was very concerned. And to be honest, I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it. But I didn't want to disappoint the people that I was with. So I sucked it up, buttercup, used my brother's hand more as a uh, balance, I guess you could say, and use the handrail. No problem. I didn't skip up the stairs, but I definitely got up those three stairs, enjoyed the concert, and then I needed to walk about three quarters of a block to our car. No problem. After being out all afternoon, walking around, enjoying company, being around crowds, God has done a miracle in me, and I will forever give thanks to it. But I wanted to give you guys an update on what God is doing. And I'm not going to edit this very much. You're going to notice there's a few speech impediments pop up now and again. But go back and look at some of the videos I've done in the past. You can tell they've been heavily edited. This one, I'm not going to do it. You can see the difference in how my healing is continuing by looking at the video and that little eye card either here or there and you'll see the difference because Bethel did not edit out my speech impediment in any way. So I can use that to testify that the healing that God began on April the 17th is continuing to go on today, July the 27th, 2022. If you want more information about the Bethel online healing rooms or the in-person healing rooms, I'll put the link in the description. But you don't need to go to the healing rooms to be healed. As I pray for you right now, I am praying to the God that heals because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I now have medical proof when it comes to my eyes and my blood pressure that I have been healed and the healing still progresses. That God I am praying to, to heal you of any infirmity in your body or in your mind or in your spirit. I speak the shalom, peace of God, the all-encompassing peace the peace that destroys chaos. I speak that peace over you now, in Jesus' name.